Now, if you're just tuning in, um, we're asking what economic policies and outlook should look like. You know, f that's our focus. What should we? What questions should we be asking these our people for? These people that say they want to be governors, presidents, or elected offices for 2023. Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 Tunji, I don't know whether I, I should be happy or... Because I'm having a bit of mixed emotions. Usually, I'm a very hyper, excited person, but you have depressed me. Thank you very much. But you know what? I have that effect on people. I don't know why. Yes, you, you are having that effect on me, Tunji, and I'm a very happy go girl, you know? But I choose to find the positive in this. You mentioned two things. You said, why do people get poor? Right? Two things. You said, you said education, healthcare. And you said, what economic model would work? That we should stop looking at the general um, whatever that is out there and find a way to build an economic model that would work for us here in Nigeria. So if you, you know, based on your study and based on the amount of knowledge you have gathered about the Nigerian economy, if you were to do something like painting a picture of a vision of what an economic model that would work for the, add the corruption factor, add all the factors in this Nigeria, but find an economic model that would work for us, peculiarly for this country, what would that look like? I mean, it's simple. Take government out of business and restrict government to the place of regulation hmm. and also put in laws to make sure that that regulation is not overreaching. I'll explain why. Um, there is no country in the world. There is no country. And, and you know, we could, we, could, we could check this. Maybe China to some extent, but they built their economy in, its, in such a way that the businesses will build it. Every country was built on the back of business. Hmm. And we've seen it in Nigeria. So if you want to look at the fact that Nigeria is a net exporter of cement. Now, you can complain cement is expensive, cement is this, cement is that. But one thing you cannot complain is that there's a shortage of cement in Nigeria. Hmm. Right? You can't complain that because we have cement so much that we are exporting cement. Hmm. If we're able to allow businesses be involved in the factors of production. I'm talking about the value chain of agriculture, the value chain of infrastructure, the value chain of healthcare, um, education. We will see results. Why? Because as a business person, there is no how that I have invested money in this, that I would then allow you as a politician to destroy what I have created. Mm. I will always fight back. So what we need to do is remove this government entirely from business. And when I mean entirely from business, I want to show you the hand of government in almost every business. Mm. Um, electricity. Yeah, there. Government is still paying subsidies in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Petrol. Same. Government is still paying for it somewhere one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Agriculture. Mm -hmm. Government is still paying for Subsidial fertilizers, fertilizers. Um, herbicides, all these things. Um, I mean, name one thing, infrastructure. Government still paying for it across board. So we need to remove government. Because first of all, government doesn't even have the money. Mo mo most people don't realize this. That's where we started from. We don't have enough money. Government doesn't have the money to do it. But because government knows that if it tells you that it doesn't have the money to do it, you might panic. Government continues to pretend, pretend that they have the money. Hey. So they continue to say, oh, we will do it, we will do it, we will do it, so that you are happy. Mm -hmm. Then they go right around and go and borrow money from China or the US or the EU mm -hmm. and come and do it. So why don't we allow business people go and borrow that money at very good rates and give us the world-class infrastructure we want so that we pay for it and still experience and enjoy it? So look at the, um, the rail system that was created by Governor Michi. Mm -hmm. beautiful system it was real israel we went to borrow the money from china we got china to do it mm -hmm. if that money was given to somebody who is a business person i can guarantee you that as good as the trains that we have right now are we would have gotten better trains mm -hmm. you know why because the person will be thinking longevity he'll be thinking i need to make my money for 30 years mm -hmm. The person will want to give you the very best of infrastructure, not because of you, but because of him or her. Mm. Because I need to keep making my money for 30 years. This thing cannot break down. 
all those issues of, oh, it broke down here, it broke down there. It cannot happen because my money is on the line. Yeah. Do you get? So those are the kind of thinkings we have to have. I need everybody to watch this documentary, The Men Who Built America. Yeah. I've you clearly that. understand how infrastructure is built based on uh, business cases. Hmm. So a rail system isn't built just because we want to have rail. What is going to be transported on that rail? Who is transporting that rail route? So those are the kind of thoughts that we have to think about. And mm. for me, it really starts with removing government from business and keeping government in the place of regulation, but also putting the enabling laws to make sure that government's hand is not overreaching in the place of regulation. Okay, let's take some comments from our audience. Um, so Benson says, um, the, for private organizations to thrive, they must be performance driven. Provided our government is not performance driven, the present future continues to suffer. Um, Jennifer, you have some comments with you. Hey, I have a comment from Ada. She said, Mr. Tunji is spot on. In my estate in Magodo, we enjoy premium electricity and sometimes the service is not really premium. But if you see the quarrels in estate groups over the cost with small blackouts, Nigerians don't want to pay for anything but want premium service. Okay. There is also a comment from Ade. Ade said, good evening, ladies. We have back we have bad, bad leaders. Go, yeah. yeah, we have bad leaders in government and the only judgment for them is to apply Jerry Lawrence's um, strategies. I believe federal government printed money because they both they are both in the same circumference. Look at Jagaba making <laughs> golf of himself by calling Osibanjo's wife as Aisha Buari and book at book at a book, at, at a book launch in Abuja. Is it too old to think of 2023? <laughs> you see your comment. Okay, my comment goes to us. Um, I am not. I am not sure as a people we understand that we might need to really face hard times before things get better. We prefer window dressing. I don't get why we still maintain subsidy for fuel. Let fuel become expensive. People will make new adjustments. This is from GD. Yeah. The second comment. Please. I will take that. Uh, I'll, no, I'll you answer. need to take it first. Yes, I will take, take that answer. I'll, I'll respond to that. Then secondly, this is, um, there's no name here. It says. From Rafael, according to okay, Rafael. Okay, this is from Rafael. And it says there is no policy when there is no willpower to implement it. Our present government operate and rule through mere instincts and no direction. Okay. okay, if I may respond to what um, Jide said, where he said that um, um, fuel, subsidy. Fuel, sub fuel subsidy and that we are not willing to pay for, um, uh, we're not willing to pay for goods. My, my take is this, basically. I think Nigeria is, we, we Nigerians, we're actually re willing to pay for goods. But the key thing is for us to pay for goods, we need to know that what we are paying for we are getting actual service for it. Mm. Not a situation whereby it's been um, um, sidelined side to one corner. Just like we have got Fadarism playing his game, we have corruption playing his game in the system. If we have a system whereby every, everyone is accountable for everything that mm. comes in and goes out okay. of the system. So I you're think talking about we'll, integrity? Yes. Let me take a comment, then I pay. want Tunji to, comment, to address this comment. It says, Lee Kuan Yew did not babysit his citizens. They were made to work hard and sacrificed for the, what they enjoy today. So given that you know the way we are, Nigerians, we are Faji people. We don't like stress. Nigerians want, want good things, but they really are not ready for the hard times. I am ready to sacrifice. I'm willing to starve. I'm willing to say, you know what? But you see, when I'm starving and I don't see Jennifer eating one bowl of turkey, <laughs> <laughs> it will not work. <laughs> Do you understand? You know, so tell me, um, Tunji, um, what kind of leader should we be looking out for in 2023 when it comes to economic policies and decision making, right, that will put their foot on ground? Because we know we have beautiful policies on paper. They're not being implemented. So what kind of leader should we be looking out for that would take our economy out of this they call it quagmire that we are in. <laughs> First of all, it has to be a government, a, a leader that is not looking to come back for re-election. Because mm. I will tell you this, 
what no matter the smiley face, no matter the beautiful face of the person who starts to implement the hard decisions, Nigerians will not like that person. Not only will Nigerians not like that person, um, the powers that be will want to remove that person. So it's only a matter of time this person will be removed from office. Uh, things will be banded around like, oh, look at the high rate of inflation. Oh, ah, things are so hard right now. Things are so expensive. Our children cannot even go to school anymore. It's true. It, and it is possible that that would be it because, you see, my problem is this. You don't want to go through hard times. You don't want to go through hard times. But the times are getting harder eventually. Exactly. Will you not just go through it once and for all and start benefiting from the good times? But you are not. It, things are not getting better. But it's because it doesn't come at you once. Mm. You just rather like the slow suffering. You know, and another thing that bothers me again is that when this same set of Nigerians go to the US or go to the UK or go anywhere in the world, they pay expensive for infrastructure. Exactly. They pay expensive for a small cubicle where they will lay their head. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, food is really expensive. Transportation, they don't use Ubers in those countries. They use the bus. Mm -hmm. You know, so none of them drive their cars. Petrol is expensive. People walk long distances in those countries. Exactly. I'm sure you, you've seen how many people work, how people walk from here to there in London or London. In, in America. But here, you can't move. You must drive. Those are the things that we, we need to eliminate from the general consensus and general thinking of Nigerians. Nigeria is a very cheap country to live in. It's just that it is not a functional system. Hmm. It is a very cheap country. How much taxes are you paying? Hmm. In some countries in the world, you pay up to 50% of your income. Hmm. So that means that you will earn 200K, and you just remove 100K, 100K and to give to government. government. <laughs> Will you not riot? <laughs> but, <laughs> but you see, that's the thing. I, I think generally, uh, whoever we're looking to must be ready not to come back, hmm. uh, but must be ready to lay the foundation in the first, in the four years that the person is in office. Hmm. Um, hopefully, whoever comes after that person will continue. Um, but what we're asking is a big, big thing from any Nigerian. Any Nigerian, I don't care who the person is, uh, Jagaban, Obaseki, Tunji Andrews, it's a very big thing to ask. So I, I believe the best way is for us to be the change rather than expect the change from the leadership. Absolutely. Because if we are the change, then we will elect the right people into office. Fantastic. Absolutely. So if we are the change, we will elect the right people. That's a, that's a fantastic one. But it, what role do you think... Um, financial literacy, because you are a financial literacy advocate, okay? What role do you think it will play to boost the economy and enlighten the populace in Nigeria towards 2023, so that we know who we are actually going to pick as our economic leader? So a, a lot of all we are complaining about, and a lot of the um, news that you see, banditry, kidnapping, quarrels, riots here and there, it's all tied, it's all economic. It's basically tied to the fact that people do not have enough money to feed. Mm. The honest truth is that if you were to give all the people that are rioting, quarreling, doing all those things, enough money, they would rather be drinking something or eating something somewhere than going out to fight or quarrel. And that's the general truth about Nigerians. Mm. Um, so the question is, how do, then do we make sure that these people are able to earn this money themselves? Nigeria is a very beautiful country. It's a vast country that you can be able to harness a lot. If you just know how to tweak a little bit of this, tweak a little bit of that to make it work for you. So understanding financial literacy knows you have to save a bit. You have to also increase your earning. There's so many things people can do to be able to increase their capacity to earn. But more importantly, people are not using the financial services system. Mm. So in most countries across the world, you, you don't buy a car with cash. It's only in Nigeria that you, uh, you want pay. to buy a two million car <laughs> and you gather the entire two, two million, million and go and give to the car owner. Mm -hmm. If you try it in the US, you probably might be arrested. In fact, they but... will flag you. They will go and investigate <laughs> exactly. you. <laughs> exactly. So um, we, we need to know how to use financial services. So you want to get a, a, um, assets, you want to buy equipment for your company, 
How can you be able to use leasing um, credit to be able to do it? How should you be able to have more relationship with your bankers, get closer to them, understand what is available to you? Um, know basically how you can be able to get accommodation without spending so much money. So there's a lot around financial literacy. And, you know, for people like me, because the company I work, I, I run, we're pushing the informal sector, self-employed people to have retirement savings. And the truth about it is that if you know that this, the future is somehow secure, there will be a, a little bit of courage to attack today a bit harder. Exactly. You know, a lot of us are in our comfort zone. Ah, let me not go and push that place because ah, if I push it, what will happen tomorrow? Mm -hmm. If we know that tomorrow is a bit secure, we might be able to attack every day with a bit more confidence. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things that we try to teach with, uh, with the company I, I run, our mm -hmm. bar. So, you know, if we know more, we'll be able to do a lot more. And I more. think a lot more people will be able to move out of poverty. Okay, so we just have one final question, Jennifer. You want to throw in one final question? No. Oh, you lost your question. Okay. All right, so Tunji, thank you so much. But, you know, um, we'll have to bring you back. Because I saw this argument of this one-term leadership, right? And hearing you speak now, I think it makes sense to me. Because if I know that I only have this one time to do what I need to do, maybe it might truly change the orientation about pursuing certain kinds of projects. Exactly. Because most times I see with government is that they use the first four years to, to as leak and do all of those things, you know, so that the next four years, you know, they can now use it to loot money gain. and gain. What because most gain. times you are trying to settle everybody mm. for your first four years, yeah. you know, how, because you want to be re-elected. Mm. Then by the time you now get to that uh, re-election uh, time, you are re-elected. Now it's now time for you to now pay yourself back. That's what we see play out all the time. And this has really taken a huge toll on our economy, right? Yes. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, I really don't know how we're going to do this, you know. But um, do you think bringing in more technocrats into the political system? Because I was having a, a chat, you know, <laughs> with someone this evening. And he was saying that all this one that people are doing, you people can never find any change until you go and join a political party and go and be in politics. Do you think if we have more Tunji Andrews, more EC, more Jennifer, more who are going into politics, do you think it will help with, econ with uh, I mean, getting a, a, a better economy? No. And Why? I, I, I say this with a bit of knowledge. Um, I've been in rooms uh, where I'm talking about rooms at the presidential level where we're supposed to create um, plans for, for the economy. And there were economists top to bottom everywhere in that room. And we created the worst possible plan that I have seen. I'm talking about the worst possible plan. And despite how much we knew in that room, people were driven by, I, I don't know what the motives were, because they obviously knew what they were saying was wrong. But we came out with the worst possible plan by consensus. Hmm. So it is really not about, see, power Politics is about power. It's about how I can influence every process. And there will always be power brokers until the people collectively become a power block. Hmm. Those power brokers will continue to, you know, build power. Hmm. So that is, that is my thinking. Put more te uh, technocrats there. Many of them will be frustrated and will exit eventually. Wow. And we've seen many of them in the recent past who just stayed one tenure, saw that their name was being spoiled, and they had to exit. Mm, so we will job. only just spoil more people's names. How? What we need is to make sure that we as a people can demand better for, uh, for better leadership. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ndi <sighs> Andrew. We hope we can bring you back again. <laughs> All right. So Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our sales our focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles as this will be an all year round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. Thank you again, ladies. All right, so in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The ultimate resource in economic development is people. It is people, not capital or raw materials, that develop a, an economy. And I think, you know, if you listen to what Tunji said, it still ties down people. very well to our quote. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>